Hey guys, how you doing? So, is the tech job market dead? What's uh, lead with the conclusion? The short answer is it's not dead, but it has changed for a few reasons. What is happening with all the layoffs? So we've heard the big high profile layoffs, Twitter, and Meta, and many other companies in the tech space have laid off a ton of employees. What happened? Why are they laying them off? Did the market implode? What's going on? Let me give you the bullet points. Number one, uh, during the boom, there was uh, overhiring. So during the pandemic, the money flowed like crazy. Interest rates were super low. So all these tech companies were doing what I would characterize as defensive hires. They were just hiring everybody they could hire. They had cheap money. They had lots of money. Cheap money means low interest rates. So they had lots of money, so they're hiring everybody. So Google would hire everybody they can get their hands on because they were afraid Meta might hire some special talent, so on and so forth. They, didn't run, they did not want to run out of tech workers. So this is uh, normal during a boom cycle. So they go wild with their hiring. And then when that boom collapses or starts to settle down to normal, they start laying off people because they realize during the boom cycle, they hired a bunch of people that they really didn't need. They also hired a bunch of people that were not really qualified. It's normal, boom, you have this crazy frenzy of hiring. Now it's settling down. They get rid of the people who are really not needed at the company. So that's why you're seeing a huge, massive number of layoffs. And by the way, a lot of these layoffs are actually not coder types. They're more middle management types. So yeah, coders, different game. So besides the boom reason, the boom bust cycle that we I've seen several times before, besides that reason for the layoffs, there's also a fear of recession. So especially publicly traded companies, uh, they're always trying to look good every quarter, every, every quarterly report to keep the stock up. So they will lay off people defensively in anticipation of a recession kind of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So that's another reason for the layoffs. It's just a normal business practice. Oh, recession's coming. We better lay off a bunch of people. And finally, as I alluded to before, when you had super low interest rates and you could borrow money at practically no, well, hardly any interest, you had all this cash flowing around like crazy. And so they hire a bunch of people with this cash. Now with the cost of cash or the cost of capital, as they like to say in the finance world, now that that's gotten much more expensive, meaning higher interest rates, eh, they don't got all kinds of money to throw around crazy. That's the reason why you are seeing all these tech layoffs. It's more of a correction, a more of a leveling out of things. There was an artificial boom. With artificial booms, they hire a bunch of people they don't know, they don't, they don't need really. They hire a bunch of people who are not necessarily qualified. That's the situation. Let me emphasize, as I said before, most of the layoffs are of people who were not qualified to begin with or not really needed. And in the case where they did fire tech people, coders, uh, they typically get picked up by other companies pretty quickly. So uh, if you got experience, don't worry about it. So the problem is, People just entering the job market. Noobs, people with very little experience, what do they do? They gotta compete with a bunch of people who already have a few years experience or more. And the market is generally tighter overall. Well, good news, number one, is that this is going to end. This boom bust cycle, it always levels out again and they'll start hiring again. And uh, so don't worry about that. This is not forever, this is temporary. But what do you do now? Do you wait for the this fear cycle that we're in to, to end uh, and go play video games or something? Or what can you do to mitigate for this? Well, there's two things you can do. Number one, you can level up your skills, but not in the way that you think. Now, I'm assuming you already know the basics of coding and software development. You have the basic technical skills, the fundamental skills, as I say. That's fine. That's cool. You got to do that first for anyway. But what you need after that is the professional skills, the real world experience. Now, what I have people do is they go out and they do two to three small free freelance projects so that they can get their hands dirty 
with real practical coding and development. But there's all other things you can do as well. So the solution to the job problem for people new to the game, uh, number one, do two to three small little projects, free freelance projects for people. I talk about this in many of my videos. Number two, you got to learn about the job market. See what employees are looking for in your area. Now you can go to job sites. I like the sponsor of this video, Dice. Check out all the careers that are available. As you can see here, there's lots of jobs. Just in New York City alone, there's right now, today, recording this in July 2023, in this crazy time where everything is terrible, look, there are 3,421 jobs. Lots of jobs there available. What's cool about DICE is that you can uh, filter and go remote only or work from home available, 1,500 jobs. So let's do a quick job search in California. So we're going to go for React jobs, search jobs. So we have 358 jobs. So I've excluded remote so we can really refine our search. If we find a particular job posting link, we could save it if you create an account. So check it out. Senior.net developer, bonus full stack, React. Click on through. You get the job description, etc. Pretty cool. The skill sets that you need. And you can check out similar jobs. You see, becoming a professional developer goes way beyond just coding. You have to actually develop good professional skills. Those are the soft skills. Those are the job searching skills. So here's a, an ebook that DICE provides for free. Link will be below. So you have the ultimate guide to your successful tech career. It's very comprehensive. It gets into everything. Entering the industry, looks at colleges and boot camps, how to land your first role in the tech career. Very comprehensive guide. Other things that they have, articles on various particular jobs within the tech space, programmer, graphic designer, UX, UI designer, etc. We have interviews with hiring managers and so forth. Is teamwork important for graphic designers? When I'm hiring a graphic designer, I want to know that they have worked with a team, they have good communication skills. Collaboration is key. What I've been teaching people for the longest time now, you need soft skills, you need professional skills. So to recap, when you're getting into the job market, you have to have, of course, those foundational skill sets. You need to be able to write the code. You need to be able to do the design. That's key, no question about that. But you also need that extra level of professional skills. You need to be able to communicate well. You need to understand your job market to assess what people are actually looking for in your part of the world. You know, in New York, there may be a big demand for React developers. And you go to Spain, I don't know, Barcelona, and they may have a big demand for .NET developers. Who knows? I'm just coming up with examples here, but you get the idea. So a professional not only understands their key skill sets, which are you know, key, but they also understand the job market and they understand how to navigate in the workplace. So the articles and the resources that DICE provides in their free eBooks is uh, useful in that regard. Check out dice.com is the sponsor of this video. I get sponsorship offers all the time. I refuse the vast majority of them. I only accept sponsors whose uh, business is aligned with what I'm doing here. So check out the links below and uh, don't worry about the job market. Just follow the steps I provide. Check out my previous videos. Don't worry, you'll get there. Also, this low in the activity will pass and the hiring will start to ramp up again. The key thing is to get yourself out there and uh, do those free freelance projects. Start uh, checking out the job market, studying what it is to be a professional, and uh, you'll get there. Thanks for watching. My name is Steph, and some people call me Uncle Steph. I am a mentor in the ways of the code and so many other things. Check out the links below or just check out UncleSteph.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.